guys, welcome to another edition of the recap. Today on the recap, we are looking at quite a bit. We will start with me playing for you a recording I did of my crash course in English A. When I start each of my crash course, I do a TED talk where I try to be motivational to the students who attend those crash courses. I'm going to play for you one of the things I told them about hard work, being able to beat talent any day of the week. After that, we'll go into the next set of crash courses on how you can get registered. And finally, we will give you some updates on CXC's webinar that was recently held. So let's go into this. Yes, tonight's TED Talk will start with hard work beats talent any day of the week. As I said earlier, it's one of the things I go by particularly because sometimes we are dealt a bad situation in life and we cannot really change what we were given from the inception. But what we can do about it is work hard to change that status quo. So what am I talking about? I'm saying many times, in fact, many of the students I meet on a daily basis are not all smart, born bright, born talented. But what um, I would have seen over the years is that when they are determined, when they are willing to learn, when they are willing to see themselves grow, that is when the magic happens. So hard work beats talent any day of the week. If you are willing to work hard, it really does not matter how dense you are in the public size. All that matters is how willing you are to work hard. And working hard will make all dreams come true. Every single one of them can come true if you're willing to work hard. I often give an example. Sometimes people, let's say they're born as the brightest cookie in the jar. And they spend very little time to develop that talent or to, to polish that talent. And the average guy in the room or the average student in the class would know that he or she is just average. So for them to be smart, for them to be brilliant, they need to work harder than the average person. So that's where you come in. You need to recognize that, you know what, I am not very bright, I'm not very talented, but I can work hard. And if I work hard, I will be just as good as the persons who are naturally brilliant. So that is tonight's TED Talk. Hope that did something for you. We are going to move swiftly into... Yes, so like I said in that live video, the live recording of one of my crash courses, Hard work beats talent any day of the week. And what I'm saying there, in essence, I didn't get it from the start, but what I said there to the students I had in that session was that sometimes when you are willing to work harder than the brilliant person, the persons who are born naturally bright, when you are determined to work hard, you will end up seeing that your hard work puts you on the same level as those persons who are naturally bright or even put you at a higher level than the persons who are naturally brilliant. So today I want to encourage you to continue working hard and your hard work will reap results. Hard work beats talent any day of the week. Hi guys, so English A crash course was good. It was successful, uh, was able to reach quite a lot of people and I do believe that they were impacted. I probably can have some testimonials from that, but nonetheless, we are introducing today the crash course uh, offerings of English B and Integrative Science. Both of those would be at 15 US dollars each. You go ahead and click the link in the description to register for those sessions if you're interested. So what what are these sessions going to include? These sessions are going to talk about or teach you about the uh, hot topics, the hot topics that are likely to come for your multiple choice exams. And as well, we are going to work a series of paper questions or some multiple choice type questions 
that will put you in a good driving seat for these exams, whether it's going to be in the month of July or otherwise, but it's going to be good. So go ahead and click the link in the description, register for these crash courses, and let's get it off the road. You have just about two days to make up your mind to do these crash courses. Some persons need it. Some persons um, are not as, as gifted as others. And I will introduce to you a series of why you need to work hard in just a bit. But some people do need the help. So go ahead, guys, and get that. So all classes are done using Zoom Cloud Meeting app and that way the classes are very responsive. Uh, people are interactive. You get a chance to ask their questions. I get a chance to follow up to give a little poll or a quiz now and then to ensure that everybody's following and so on. So yeah, I like the feature of using the online class to, to, to engage students. So let's get the crash course off the road. Let's do it as quickly as possible so go ahead and click the link and get yourself registered for those crash courses good so let's look at the cxc updates the major cxc updates that came out of the live webinar on the 23rd of april 2020 so cxc officials had a live webinar yesterday and they had some important updates coming out i don't think they are very important though because they're things we have assumed already so Let's go into some of these updates. First, CXC seems to be stuck with the July time frame for the exam. The exam seems to be going to be done, at least CXC hopes it's going to be done from the month end of July, of June, to mid-July. So month end of June to mid-July would be CXC 2020. As we know, or as we have heard, it's going to be SBA's and paper one assessment to, to call it a valid grade for 2020. Uh, your multiple choice exams are going to be similar to what we have seen before. So they're saying that there's not going to be a change, a deviation from what is normal in those type of assessments. The exams that the assessments that would have tested most aspects of the syllabus, they are going to continue using that. So that's a major hint to us. That's a major hint that not much is going to change. So it looks like a free year for us to pass CXC, um, CXC subjects, whether it's... I'm being distracted here by the, the notifications. My apologies. So it seems to be a free year to pass exams. Things, are, things don't seem to be changing much. So you have to get those pass papers and work them. That's all I'm going to say in that regard. So the exams are going to be done online. When I say they're online, they, they will take, well, based on what CXC said, it's going to be taking an online, offline setup kind of thing. So what is going to happen is that people who can have access to the internet and are in school and so on, they're going to be doing the, the exams on the school's computer or their personal computer, whatever the system is that CXC arranges. But the exam is going to be done on the exam portal and the paper is going to be submitted with the marks immediately. For persons who can gain access and maybe lose internet access throughout the exam, those papers are going to be uploaded after once internet is restored. So once internet is restored, those papers are going to be sent to CXE. And then there's the offline version where the exam is still going to be done on the usual paper and the hard copy and then CXC will have that inputted into computers so it can be marked electronically. So if your school cannot actually have access to computers to have the exams being done physically online, then they will do it traditionally and then the papers are going to be electronically updated all right so enough of that that's for cxc to decide who's going to do the physical paper versus the computer-based assessment you're going to have the same exams nonetheless and no you can't write the exam in another country <laughs> from where you have registered you will have to still write the exams within the same area and i do not see you writing the exam at home 
Mm-mm, that's not going to happen either. So for some people to think when your online exam means everything is being done at home, that is not going to happen. So CXC promised to release the official timetable next week. I previously shared a leaked version of that timetable. We will see if that will change. But I shared a previous version which was leaked by someone. Uh, so you can look at that and have a time frame in your head as where your subjects are going to be written or when they're going to be written. And we can confirm when CX releases the official one on their website, on their website next week. So, yeah, that's the major updates coming out of that. So, <laughs> somebody asked the question, what will happen to the waiting And to be quite honest, CX doesn't seem to know or want to say publicly what is going to be the weighting of the exams. One person said they're going to be the same as the previously previously tested exams, so same as the syllabus, 20% SBAs or 21% SBA or whatever the worth of the SBA is versus the paper one. But the registrar said that he doesn't want to say that quite yet and they're just going to try to do it to give everyone a valid exam so all right that's fair enough (laughs) forget about that it really doesn't matter it doesn't matter that you're going to do sbas or you're going to have your sba scores added to multiple choice exam scores so what i want to tell you right now is go ahead and get the practice in with your multiple choice exams so that you get the best possible score for those exams and then you will Make sure you have good SBA scores. You should have also you should have already made sure of that. And if you do not have an SBA in as yet, you should let your teachers know. Or message your teachers. Beg them if you have to do that. Because if you don't submit an SBA, you automatically fail the subject. You get ungraded. So it really doesn't matter if you get 60 out of 60 for the multiple choice questions. If you don't have an SBA, you will fail. All right, so it's, it's as serious as that. So go ahead and beg your teachers if you have to. Make sure you get the SBAs in. That's all the updates we have for now. Uh, before we go, we'll see, I promise to release a frequently asked questions uh, list. And on that list, they're going to be addressing frequently asked questions. So let's see how that goes. And let's see some of our concerns are addressed in that list. And... For persons who are preparing for the English B exams, you should continue to prepare for on-scene items. So it means that the books and poems that you have studied already are not necessarily going to be in the questions that you're going to be assessed on. All right, so that's sad, but look on the bright side, prepare for the on-scene items. I don't know what the bright side is. All right, so until we meet again, goodbye.